If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, we talk about uh, our 4th of July memories. And we're recording this on the 4th of July. You're probably listening to this sometime after the 4th of July. And we've got some Hopefully pretty... Hopefully you still have all your fingers. We've got, exactly. We've got some pretty funny stories. Then we get into the questions. We talk about increasing inflammatory markers with exercise and how that relates to digestive disorders. Should you avoid exercise if you have digestive disorders or is exercise going to help you? The next question is, we talk about mobility and how uh, having too much mobility or too much flexibility can cause problems. So if you're hypermobile, mm. how do you fix that with exercise? Then we talk about our personal habits that we do every single day that contribute to our personal success. And finally, what if overnight Adam, Sal, and Justin turned into women? What would be the most difficult thing about that? Well, we'd be hot. I know yeah, yeah. We, we talk all about that, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Also, Maps Prime Pro is available right now. Probably easily our most corrective Maps program uh, that we've ever put You're out. You're gonna need it in your toolbox. It's uh, we will go in Maps Prime Pro. We have assessments, uh, self-assessment tools, unique to Maps Prime Pro that look at your hands, your fingers, your feet, your ankles, your wrists, it's your all spine. All the prerequis- prerequisites to movement. It's all in there. You do the self-assessments tool. There's correctional exercise in there, programmed out to get you more connected to your body, so you can lift more weight, get better recruitment patterns, have no pain, move better. Just get better results. This is a program where you're going to learn quite a bit. In fact, I didn't. I was not familiar with a lot of the movements that we put in Maps Prime Pro. Um, we collaborated with Dr. Justin Brink, who's our mobility and movement guru. So this is a program you don't want to miss, and it's on sale. It's discounted because it's a new launch. Uh, the place to get it and the place to check it out is mindpumpmedia.com. Poor Justin. He's not feeling good today, Adam. I know. His tummy hurts. No, it's, he it's got not your, my tummy, dude. It's not his tummy. He's, um, he, needs a, he, needs, he needs like a hug. Marijuana? No, um, no. I think he needs a hug. A hug. No, like a big, a big cuddly bear hug from, from Adam. I don't need any. From some of hugs. our fans? From, <laughs> he's a big bear hug. I don't need any from. physical contact. If you're listening to this podcast and you want Justin to feel better. Please send Justin <laughs> a hug. Send him a virtual <laughs> hug. Uh, DM him a hug. I will block uh, it. Uh, mind pump Justin on Instagram. <laughs> It'll make him feel a lot better. No. <laughs> What's going on, Justin? It's Fourth of July, motherfuckers. Fourth of July. Yeah. Why are we? Uh, why are we here? Independent. Yeah, the aliens are coming. Because mm. we don't. We don't fuck around. That's why. Mm. Yeah. We, just we decide work. That we don't. Yeah. We, we don't work like when other people America. sleep. We work. It's and then, America. And then we're, we go, and then we go home at three o'clock. We are. Yeah, we're celebrating <laughs> yeah, yeah. America by dropping knowledge, fitness knowledge. For people. Uh, fitness knowledge. Fitness in your life. Now you know what's cool about uh, Independence Day. What? So last night, trust me, I won't blowing go, shit up. I'm not going to about get, it. I'm not going to get crazy uh, political. So I know you guys are getting scared here. I know. I was trying to divert you. I there. know. No, 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 no. Uh, it's really crazy when you examine the. When you look at like the the Bill of Rights, because um, I do that a lot on the you, weekends, you should, <laughs> you should. You, know, it's a, you take it's, that. I saw Katrina, and she's like, yeah, hey, it's, you know, we finished the laundry early. We got all our meals prepped. What do you want to do? I'm like, you know what? Uh, let's let's, go, the, let's the, go over the Bill of Rights. Let's, let's go over uh, that, real dude. Quick. I want to look at some thumb things. through it. A little has bit. to be. I want to go over this. And, and I, I like all the amendments. And I want to be yeah, clear. Actually. I want to be clear. We have never fully expressed the vision or the full expression of liberty in this country. It's, it's been for some people, not for other people, but... I thought you said we're not going to get political. Hold on, dude. It's no, brilliant. No, no. It's, him, yeah. it's brilliant. The, the, at the time when they wrote that out, mm. uh, I mean, ju- your, your countries were run by monarchs, kings and queens, and here was a bunch of guys who were like, hey, here's a whole country yeah. that you can rule over, and they're like, nah, what we're going to do is we're going to write a bunch of rules that make it impossible to rule over individuals yeah brilliant yeah brilliant For, forward thinkers brilliant and i love and I, i'm glad that freedom we had it. And I'm freedom glad. ain't free Absolutely. unless you make it be i think of braveheart uh, mel gibson just, you, right there you just sounded like uh 
Yeah. Who, whose voice was America, that? America, fuck yeah. Yeah, but you have a little... Save the motherfucking yeah. Eddie Vedder, that's who you sound like. Durka, durka. Yeah. Ed- durka, durka, durka. <laughs> Eddie Vedder. What do you guys do on the 4th? Oh, What's your movie. celebration? Like, what do you guys do? Work. Besides after work, dude. Uh, yeah, I don't have kids, dude, so I'm not... And I'm not and what? Over yeah, here sucks. Uh, he's it the one sucks for here. fireworks over here. So yeah. I, I grew up in areas where you could light fucking anything. So I've already... I've done all the cool stuff. Over here, we get sparklers. You don't even, no, 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 no. You don't get sparklers uh, here. Sparklers. Those are illegal, too, yeah, bro. You can't even yeah, do anything. You can't get anything you over here. You barely, like, light a match yeah, on fire. You yeah. Get, you, we, it's not fun anymore, Speaking man. Speaking of liberty, thanks. So I blow shit up anyway because I'm a rebel. Don't do that, dude. Yeah. All right. No, I'm I, going what to. is your guys' favorite? Okay, well, okay. let's do this. What's your favorite? Because I've seen quite a few uh, fireworks shows. Where where, and what was your favorite fireworks show you've ever seen? Mm, oh. Hollywood Bowl, I think. Hollywood long, Bowl? Yeah. What was that? A long time ago. Down in Hollywood. Which is <laughs> Adam? I mean, it's, it's like, <laughs> no, yeah, I know. it's what's pretty the, obvious. Hey, Justin, <laughs> what's the, yeah. what's the, where is the Hollywood Bowl? It's obviously, I know it's in Hollywood, jackass. <laughs> where is the, where is it? Where's the fucking? What do you sta- want like cross streets or no? Like, is uh, that the, is that the Rose Bowl? Is that the stadium? Uh, no, it's a ho- it's it's like a theater. It's called the Hollywood it's Bowl. The Hollywood Bowl. Yeah, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> right. It's a th- it's a closed theater or is it an amphitheater? It's like an amphitheater. Okay, you're yeah. terrible at telling stories, dude. It's not closed because <laughs> just, just throw some because ra- you, you know just what? Mad our, our listeners all over in out. Australia yeah. totally know where that just, fucking is. You jackass. It's called the Hollywood. He got mad because he got called out. It's not closed because you wouldn't be able to do fireworks. No shit. It's why. Well, you. I'm saying. Saying that uh, sarcastically because his uh, description is actually terrible. that would be way better. You know, oh my if you did God. like an indoor yeah. fireworks show, that'd be fucking just epic. shooting people with it. Yeah. Hey, what state is California in? I'm just yeah. kidding. Let's so stop. Just stop, <laughs> stop while we're ahead. I, you know, what my favorite uh, fireworks show was what? My friend's backyard. We went to his house one year. Actually, it was my favorite, and my it's almost the time that I had to. Uh, I almost kicked his ass too. Why? He. So I don't know where he got. This was. I'm not gonna say when this happened, but he, he had gone somewhere and purchased serious serious contraband fireworks i'm talking about like the like straight up from mexico or what maybe like roman candles all no the like the like the cannons dude like, like the big dynamite like the big tubes like this big and you put a big ass like ball in there and you light it mm. and then it's like Phoom. that's yeah. a roman then, candle n- that's what i just tried no to well the, these were so i know roman candles roman candles are the tubes that shoot out the. yeah no Phoom. this was this was shooting like it was like a mortar and it shoot it up, and it was like like a big one. I don't know where he bought these. Boom, right? So he's lighting these off in the backyard. Then he's got the ones that he lights and throws that explode. Then he's shooting Roman candles everywhere. Long story short, alcohol was involved, set his backyard on fire. We put it out. <laughs> and this is why we can't do yeah. fucking fireworks. <laughs> we, we, and, and, by, and by the way, <laughs> yeah, he lives- Somebody's always going to light something And by the fire. way, he lives like- like his border, his backyard borders on like a big ass dry field. <laughs> so I'm like, and I'm like looking, I didn't know he was going to do this. I just, we just went to his house for a barbecue yeah. with a bunch of people. And I'm like, dude, you can't do that. I'm like, look at your backyard. I'm like one spark and we're in freaking, and he's like, whatever, dude. And so he's doing it, sets his tree on fire. We put it out with the hose. Then he's just throwing fireworks everywhere. Cause he, he thinks it's a great time. Doesn't realize he throws one in the direction of my daughter so she runs, it blows up, obviously you spark. Oh my god. She got so scared she started crying and he looks at me and he sees the look on my face and he's like he just starts apologizing. I'm like like damn dude, like there was a very there was about a split second there we almost we almost got in a tussle. Wow. <laughs> but we didn't. Yeah. But that's the he's a he's good a friend. Maniac. He's a cool guy, good friend of mine, never going to his house again for 4th of July. So best yeah. fireworks. But it was you? awesome because it was it was exciting. Best fireworks for you were homemade a homemade version. Yeah, it was exciting. Oh, dude. Wow, that's pretty. Just because of the recklessness of yeah, it. Yeah, it was the yeah. it was like the fear. Yeah, I take mine back. It was uh, my mine was like when we were we took a boat out uh, from Santa Cruz and it was like a charter boat thing that we had like like champagne all that kind of stuff. But we were watching. It was like going along the coast and we were watching like the pandemonium that was going on with everybody illegally shooting these fucking things off. <laughs> it, they were shooting them everywhere at each other up in the air like it was a fucking chaotic like display of of fireworks it was pretty fun to watch where do people get these these fireworks from around they must go to mexico right yeah well yeah i mean it's like yeah. anything else you can get them in watsonville dude yeah yeah, yeah like, but not the, <laughs> not the ones that right. fire you know? i mean oh, like, there's somebody dude yeah, you know yeah, like you, rolling a cart around you're like, like hey man yeah there's yeah. definitely you can buy some cool shit 
get drugs here, bro. Yeah. <laughs> we, don't have, we don't grow cocaine in San Jose, but you can get it here. Yes. <laughs> For this world, there's a way. That's, yeah. A, yeah. 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 that's yeah. a good point, Adam. Yeah. 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 There's, there's a covered bridge somewhere. Yeah. You know? there's, there's, yeah. There's, somebody, there's a park. There's some yeah. dark uh, BMW it just, somewhere. It just goes <laughs> to show you. You know what it shows? You know what it demonstrates? That if there's a, if there's a strong enough demand in the market... You can create whatever laws you want. That shit will exist. Oh, yeah. You guys know when, like, the Soviet Union, they had black markets for, like, milk and shit like that? Well, what? oh, yeah. Yeah. I Shoes. That. I had milk? A, I had a friend. God, they live so hard I had a, there. Well, because they, they were so, they rationed it so much that they, they created a black market. So I had a friend who went to the Soviet Union when he was, like, a teenager. His family did some work there or whatever. And he had people offering to buy his Nikes off of him for, like, 300 bucks. He said there was a whole black market for... Nikes and Levi's for like the wealthy over there that were like the prices were crazy. Wow. Yeah. So mm. could have been a business idea. <laughs> anyway, maybe not. I don't want to be in the gulag. Uh, what's your, what, what about you, Adam? What's yeah, your favorite yeah. 4th of July party? So dude. I've seen, uh, I think uh, Great America and Disneyland both do great shows. So I've been there for oh, both yeah, of those. Oh, yeah. That's a good call. But my favorite for sure, all time favorite was uh, Incline Village in Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe, um, so you could let me set the stage for you. If you've never been to Tahoe, it's a beautiful lake as it is, and it's huge. And then there's uh, a shoreline that's like a beach. So even though it's a lake, you feel like you're laying out on a beach. And then this huge uh, grassy knoll area, and everybody comes out, and all, and they rope off the grassy area, and everybody's barbecuing. People are running like uh, extension cords from their houses, like a block away. So they have out speakers outside. And the local radio station actually uh, collaborates with whoever's putting on the fireworks show. Obviously, I'm sure they have something to do with it because all the songs from that night play with the the fireworks so you got all these people imagine barbecue and drinking everyone's super friendly sharing beer oh yeah have have a burger whatever everyone's all sharing and having a good time and you're laying out on this grass right next to the lake looking up at the sky listening to radio station playing all these great classic songs and the songs all go with the fireworks so as the fireworks are exploding off they're going with the beat of the song and then of course they always have like some you know, great epic song to end it with. The that, finale. Yeah, yeah, the finale, and it's it was awesome. I mean, I think it was it's was at least a a good half hour, forty five minute straight show of just constant songs being played with, and it was beautiful. Beautiful. The only shitty knock I have on it was it was hands down probably the worst place to get out of. Oh, once hours I, total yeah. bottleneck. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, I think if if I could go back and do that again, because I've talked about that uh, going up there again, and I've told you because Katrina wasn't, we weren't together at this time, and I said, man, I would love to go up there with you for that, but I would really want to plan like a week off of work to where we don't have to come back when everybody else is coming back and just stay there, because I I remember it took us three or four hours to get just out of Tahoe. Like it was so crazy. Yeah, yeah, it was. Cr- it was crazy. It was and, makes and it, it almost not worth it. Yeah, no, it, that's. I haven't gone back for that exact reason. I was like, that drive home was so miserable, sitting in traffic for that long. Fourth of July weather too. Imagine it's fucking uh, hot and shit, and you just want to get home, uh, right? I so. heard Burning Man is is just as horrible. Get, oh, to like get in and out. Back, yeah. Did you hear what's going to happen at Burning Man? By the way, no. no. So the feds said that they're actually going to patrol Burning Man and send agents in there or to drug test, not drug test, but to check for drugs in and out and then maybe what? patrol the fucking... No. Yeah, dude. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> I'm Jeez. serious. Dude. They, I just what read else? an article. I, I mean... Don't they have anything better to do? Yeah, because of all the crazy, you know, the bad yeah. things that happen, all the killings. Yeah, exactly. Dude, yeah, so, so they're, they're, they're like talking about... I hope about, that doesn't happen. Well, that's... Dude. It's, it's, I mean, if they say it's going to happen, it could, or it could just be like a tactic or whatever, yeah. but I mean, that's like... That's like shooting fish in a barrel. I know. <laughs> I know. Their numbers down or yeah. something. They yeah. need to like go. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're, they're in just immediate. collect everybody in hey, paddy wagons. Yeah. Hey guys, our uh. our innocent uh, drug user busts are uh. low this like year. Oh, you're having too much of a good time. Yeah. Everybody yeah. hop in. Where can Bullshit we go? They do like in the seventies and shit, dude. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. don't do that now. Anymore. Sweep Come them up. On. You know what? You know what cracks me up? Leave them alone. If they go there and start testing, they'll find a bunch of like Silicon Valley executives and shit. They'll get busted. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm. How is that going to work? Elon Musk. Yeah, oh. they're gonna do that. They're, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna do stops on the way in and out. Um, well, and, okay, I can see that, like to stop people. And from, I think I read like, from I, partying. I'm not clear, but I think I read that they're gonna be inserting agents 
in there to you know to check people. Yeah. So look stuff. look like, for the people. Look that for the guys like, hey, let's do some drugs, I was guys. Just say yeah. that. <laughs> if someone walks up to you and says, hey, do you guys hey, want to do drugs? Hey guys, come on, let's do some drugs. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Good. Where are the drugs at? You could just you could just test <laughs> yeah. people. You could just do like a litmus test. Like, hey, do you want to do some whatever? Be like, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. First, pull your pants down and show me your dick. Yeah. You know, some shit that a cop would never do. Like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> Sorry, not doing anything with you. Wow. Yeah. You know right, right, a normal yeah. burning man person. Like, sure, that's yeah. all I got to do to get some acid. Yeah. What do you mean? I'm already <laughs> What's naked. Your name? Oh yeah, that's true. Jim Smith. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't believe that. Agent Smith. Yeah. You guys have a favorite Fourth of July food? Uh, dude, double burger action. <laughs> <laughs> why'd you so say burger it? with bacon why'd you say know. it like that I'm trying to spice it up like it's just a burger I felt it's like you just, you just made up a new genre for I feel porn like uh, I like that double burger action I feel like double tri-tip burger. is like the the, the, the meal Pounding. you guys don't like the hot dog I'm not a hot I dog guy really like hot there's dogs. something about something, yeah there's something about eating wieners I know that you're into that uh, but I'm not really into that there's you know, something they're about not, they're yeah. not good bro it's like just relax the jaw no it's super not good for you maybe like a sausage yeah an Italian oh, sausage. Like, you look, thank you. Yeah. Looks right at me. Wow. You, th- there's something about <laughs> spicy. There's something about eating a hot dog on Fourth of July that I just I have to like mm, I enjoy it. It's like nostalgia. Yes. Yeah. There's something about Maybe, it. I can really see good. that. Well, you know I, I mean? can see that too because you probably have childhood yeah. memories Overly of playing meat. with sparklers and kicking rose things around and doing the and doing the hot dogs. I can mm. see that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey guys, want to go do the hot dogs? <laughs> <laughs> light some fireworks just, and do hot dogs. Just lighten yeah. some shit off. So I like the no, I like the I like hot dogs on 4th of July and the burgers, man. And then uh, potato salad. Potato Ooh, salad. Can your yeah. tummy handle potato salad? With a bunch what? of bacon. Why not? I, doesn't no it dairy. have dairy in it? My in-laws no. make amazing Mayonnaise. Uh, potato salad. Do they really? Yeah. What do they put in they it? They throw a ton of bacon in it. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that it's, sounds it's, so good. It's, it's a bacon so salad. Yeah, it's gar- really gar- bacon. Garnished with, with potato. Yeah, a little bit of potato. On top and, of it. Yeah. So where are you guys going then for the 4th? What's your deal? What are you guys doing? You're looking at it, my friend. You guys aren't going anywhere? No. You're going to go home with your... That's gonna it? go home, dude. Yeah, that's it. You're going out? What are you doing? I mean, like at Scotts Valley, they have like a... We'll, we'll probably be able to see it, you know, from... Mm. There, there's like this place where they, they've blocked it off now, though. They're assholes about it. But mm. we used to sneak under this fence in this quarry, and you could go see it all, and that's pretty cool. I do that sometimes. So we make a big deal about the 4th of July every year. Uh, my whole family gets together. I say whole family. 30 to 50 people will go to someone's house. We have a little bit of a ritual to it. And, uh, you know, it's because we're all immigrants or, you know, children of immigrants and all like my parents and their generation are all immigrants. They have this like really, they're like super patriot, uh, patriotic. My grandfather in particular, because he came here when my mom was four, was very, very poor um, in Sicily. Actually lived in Venezuela for a while. Before he even came here. And I mean, when I say poor, I mean like one pair of shoes with holes in it, you know, poor, didn't have food all the time, poor. So he actually gets emotional every 4th of July, every single year. Oh, really? That's yes. Cool. Every single 4th of July when I, I'll go over there and he speaks broken English and everything. And you'll see him with this. He's got glasses and he's like the most macho Sicilian guy you'll ever meet in your entire life, uh, which some people don't like about him, but it's, you know, part of his character and he's a good man. So whatever. But he'll sit there with his glasses and you'll know what's about to happen because he'll lift his glass and he'll start to wipe his eye and you'll start to cuss. Because he, he hates, <laughs> oh, he hates ta- showing it. You've <laughs> talked about this before. He hates crying, yeah. but he does it a lot. He's a very that. emotional He's man. He's my kind of guy. We're all emotional. Everybody in my yeah. family is yeah. So he lifts his glasses. Ah, fuck and he sta- No, he starts, it's, it's he, starts, happening. he starts rubbing his eye and he goes, God damn it, son of a bitch. <laughs> God damn it. And then he goes... God, and, he go, and, then he's, uh, and then real loud, God bless America. Uh, God bless America. <laughs> best oh country God. on earth. And then he like walks away or something. I already love this and guy. And we're always, we're always like, when's he going to do it? Yeah. Oh, here it's it is. Coming. Here it's it is. Coming. Yeah. It's oh, that's, great. That's, that's it's epic. It's man. great. God, I'm so glad he doesn't listen to podcasts because he would literally- He would kill you. He's so pissed off for His 80-something-year-old sure. would yeah. literally beat me that's to death. That's awesome. And he could. He probably still could. <laughs> old man strength. He's just a, yeah, he's just a tough old guy, so. All right, bring on the Patreon. Yeah, where's the bear? It's America! Today's Quaw is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking Qua. The eagle has landed. Quee-qua. All right, our first question is from Jeremy Burke. 
What are your thoughts on increasing TNF alpha, a known inflammatory marker related to digestive disorders? What are your thoughts on the studies showing increased gut permeability didn't this from have, exercise? Oh, this is for me. This, this is, is my is, question. Yeah. Is it, didn't this have Sal's name? Since, yeah. I, always, yeah. since I always go first. I think so. Yeah. I, have I, nothing, go first. I have nothing to contribute. It's said Sal. I, I, I just, got nothing. Since I always go first, TNF? I'd like to know what you guys' thoughts are on that. Dude. Yeah. Tumor necrosis factor Tumor. alpha. Uh, Tumor necrosis? You yeah. had to Google that before you even fucking started. Listen, Get the fuck out of here, that. TNF. You didn't Listen know to that. me. That's like the other day when right. we were talking to uh, Stephanie and she. Dynamite. <laughs> That's about all I got for yeah. this. Yeah. No, so TNF is a, as he says, an inflammatory marker. And it, is been, it has been connected to high levels of it, has been connected to lots of uh, disorders, Alzheimer's and. Uh, inflammatory bowel diseases, and even some types of cancers. However, as with anything in the body that occurs naturally, there is there are uses for it and benefits. And, and I want to say this because we tend to find something in the body, and Western medicine does a, a great job of this. We'll find something and be like, oh, this, this is bad. Too much of this is bad. So then what we do is we try to smash it and suppress the hell out of it. And what we end up finding is too little of it is just as bad. And TNF is one of those things. All inflammatory markers are essential. So when you exercise... Can you, before you go into TNF and get deep into that, can we please explain, explain to everybody what an inflammatory marker is and why this is important? Well, if you had no inflammatory markers or no inflammatory uh, you know, system of the body, give it an you wouldn't heal. To, you wouldn't an, heal. Look, give it an analogy. You, cut, you get a cut, right? Okay. Inflammatory you know, markers and chemicals go to the site of the injury, mm -hmm. becomes inflamed, Blood clotting happens, stops the bleeding, and then that's a signal for the body to Which heal repair. and repair. An another, another way of saying that, too, that's the body's natural way of, of protecting itself. Yeah, right? identifying So there's issues. definitely a positive side it's to It's a signal. It's right. a signal that you're. it's very essential. So, uh, like, uh, for example, cortisone shots. Cortisone shots will block inflammation very, very powerfully, uh, acutely at the site of injection. Now, if you do that a bunch of times in one of your joints, like your knee, you're going to have over time degeneration of your knee because you're, that that your knee is not having the signal. Ooh, let's talk. Let's to. talk about this. Let's mm -hmm, talk about this. Mm -hmm. This is a good topic, and I feel like more people can relate to this right here. So, and this is why we we typically tell clients like, "Ooh, let's avoid this at all costs because you're not really helping anything. All you're doing is you're blocking a signal, so the mm -hmm. issue is still there, right? You'd so, be exaggerating the problem, and this is by numbing it like this that. is common, right? So when you get people that have knee pain or shoulder pain, a lot of times they'll end up getting these shots, and what all they're doing is they're not fixing the problem, whatever. They're just blunting the signal, right? They're blunting the signal. They're not changing the the, the patterning. If anything. They're continuing their their normal patterning because now they don't even have a pain signal to tell them that they're doing something wrong, mm -hmm. and you get problems. Even even long term use of NSAIDs like ibuprofen uh, over time have been connected to first off for athletes lower rates of adaptation, so yeah. less strength adaptation, less muscle building adaptation because again you're blocking that signal, but also tender uh, tendon ruptures and degeneration of joints over longer periods of time. So. All these things are very, very important. So exercise increases TNF, but that's okay under normal circumstances. It depends on the context. Now, if you're in this hyper-inflammatory sick state, then even small amounts of exercise may be damaging. But at that point, you're in a bad situation, and that's totally not a normal normal situation. Now, as far as uh, exercise uh, studies showing that exercise increases gut permeability, well, this is true, but what you want, need to understand about the gut is the gut is um, it's a two way it's like a two way uh, barrier, and depending on the situation that your body is in, it will increase or decrease the amount of things that it allows to go through the gut. It's not a it's not like a uh, a complete barrier. It's not like a a plastic lining that nothing gets through. Things have to get through the gut. Problems occur when there's constant inflammation in the gut, and things get through the gut that aren't supposed to. Just like there would be problems if you had a plastic lining in your gut and nothing came through. Now, the reason why gut permeability increases with exercise is probably because your body is trying to uptake more nutrients and fluids. So it's going to increase permeability to let those things come through. Now, Which, This is a theory of yours. Uh, no, this is actually what happens. This is why 
uh, there's been cases and so why'd you say probably then? What do you mean? You just said probably. Oh uh, no, this is what happens. But uh, when uh, there in some cases, in extreme cases, when people have a disease or something like that, like a bacterial infection, and they work out real hard, and next thing you know, that bacteria really goes through the bloodstream. This may be one of the reasons why that happens. But if you're a healthy person, um, there's there's nothing wrong with a- exercise. Is good for you 100 percent all the way if done properly across the board. If you have inflammatory bowel disease, exercise is still good for you. The thing you need to monitor is intensity. Like uh, if you go too hard with any type of disorder, you may cause it to get worse. But in in the right doses, your body gets stronger. I also feel like this is one of those issues that uh, I have with doctors, too, because they typically are going to weigh on the other side, right? They normally will tell a patient like, oh, stop exercising because this could make it worse. So I was just having a conversation with um, uh, a dermatologist on our forum on on similar topic because she was discussing how sun exposure is bad for the skin and any amount of tanning is damage to the skin. So basically avoid all you know, tanning, all uh, all forms of tanning. Uh, and now I agree with tanning beds because that's a whole different story, but... What about the benefits of vitamin D and stuff? Not only that, mm. uh, because then what, what you'll hear from them is they'll say, oh, 10 to 15 minutes of exposure is all you need. Well, there is a chronic vitamin D, D deficiency being examined now in lots of people, and there's it's being... The amount of vitamin D that we need is being questioned. Uh, so lots of scientists saying we need more, but it's beyond that. There's more than just vitamin D benefits. But anyway, my argument with her was... What we tend to do in Western medicine is we'll take something and we'll try to connect the dots and make it very simplistic. And I use the exercise as an example. If we looked at the acute effects of exercise, no, no doctor would ever recommend exercise. Mm-hmm. Like if you look at the acute effects, you work out real hard. You have all these inflammatory markers go through the roof. Free radical production through the roof. Stress hormones through the roof. Like if you just looked at the acute effects of exercise, we would easily be able to say – Wow, exercise causes heart disease, causes cancer, causes all these different problems. You need to avoid all exercise. But we know for a fact that exercise done properly makes you much healthier. It is the, one of the keys to longevity. So that's my, my point with this is it's hard to just look at one thing and then try to simplify it and look all the way down the line mm-hmm. and say, okay, here's the problem. Um, you know, uh, this is going to cause all these bad things because it doesn't necessarily always work out that way. In fact, it almost never works out that way because there's a lot of th- lot of steps that happen uh, along the way. Same thing with uh, things that activate muscle protein synthesis uh, that grow muscle also fuel cancer cells. Does that mean you want like IGF-1, for example? Do, does that mean we want to block all IGF-1? No, because you need that also. But in the context of a pro-cancer environment, it may be a bad thing. So context is important. With Wasn't, all this. And I remember listening to the Mercola episode, which I don't know when that's coming out, but um, where he was talking about vitamin D and like how like ingesting it really isn't even close to being as effective as you know just getting out and getting sun exposure. So You need for good vitamin D production, uh, and this is depends on uh, hugely individual because of skin tone, right? So, uh, and, you know, people like you're like Justin, yeah, I far less careful. exposure yeah. will produce more vitamin D in your skin than me. Mm-hmm. I ha- I need more exposure to get the same vitamin D potential. On the flip side, I can stay out in the sun without damage, uh, without nearly as much damage as you would. So, mm-hmm. very individual. That being said, um, cholesterol or blood cholesterol is an important process of the vitamin D making process. Your body uses that cholesterol to make vitamin D. So if you've got really low, really, really low cholesterol levels or you take statins, the odds of having vitamin D deficiencies are higher. So these are all all factors. But I mean, as far as the question is concerned, if you have uh, gut issues um, and you're in a really bad flare up, really monitor the intensity. But very rarely would I tell anybody to not be active because of, uh, you know, fears of, of causing more gut issues. Yeah. Freaky Jake. A lot of people struggle with mobility issues, but he has the opposite problem. He's naturally very flexible, but lacks strength and stability, which contributes to pain during squats and deadlifts. Mm. Great question. Um, and kind of similar to the first one in the sense that we we always talk about like how great it is to have all this yeah, flexibility. Flexibility without strength is instability. Very unstable. 
And he's talking about like when he does squats and deadlifts, he has pain. Was but he like a major yoga guy? Did you look at his page or anything? He so he says he has it. So it's a little longer his post, but he says it's very natural for him. Now some people are in this category where they have this. Yeah. Like their production of collagen is very di- is different uh, than the average person, so they're hyper mobile. You see people who um, uh, like will like contortionists, for example. Yeah, I was like going to say thing. sometimes you call them like double jointed or whatever yeah. it looks like, just because they're so flexible. Yeah, and so these people, it's really important that they build lots of strength. But the problem is, is when they do exercises, they find that they'll have joint pain because they it's lax. They don't have the stability. Yeah, and so the key with this particular situation is. To not move, uh, with to not hit end of range of motion with their joints. So, if you're deadlifting, for example, don't excessively anteriorly tilt, and don't let your body excessively posteriorly tilt. Go in a neutral position, stay very, very tight and tense, and go real slow with your movement, and use light weight because you have to be in complete control. Because the second you go heavier than that, and you feel like you can lift the heavy weight. What will happen is you'll start to go to end of range of motion. And with this case, you'll see them exaggerate and go anterior, uh, anterior too hard, and they'll feel like hip impingement and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, with P- and I've had actually, I, have, I haven't run to very many people like this, but I've actually had two clients that fall under this category to where literally I had a, a lady who, would, who hired me, never worked out, so super uh, you know, deconditioned, no activity level, never stretched. Could sit in a, uh, you know, could sit in a split. Yeah. Could mm. you know sit in the runners, you know, what is that called, the runner stretch or hurdler stretch? Mm-hmm. Like crazy internal, external hip, ro- you know, mobility or, or flexibility and range of motion. And so with her, everything was outside of that. Like I never trained her to. I never trained her at those ranges of motion. I was always kind of in the middle and just real slow, real tight, and it was all about hardcore control. This actually would be a case of tension movements. Are excellent I was going to say, man, that's, I mean, it just screams that for me, especially like some of the FRC techniques or even what we're bringing out in, in Prime Pro of, of being able to now isometrically contract, but then we're also going to move the joint. So you're going to articulate the joint with tension. So that just, uh, it helps to, to train the body that, you know, you're building the support system through range of motion. So you really want to overemphasize the fact that we need to squeeze and connect to that central nervous system. hundred percent. I think of maps prime and prime pro. And if you're not following one of our programs, then I would, the other outside of us, I would recommend Ken stretch. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's the first thing that comes to mind. I mean, this is a tough one to speculate too without seeing the person, right? Yeah, like, for sure. and knowing exactly uh, who we're speaking to as far as like, but if you're, if you feel confident, Sal, that's what he's explaining that he's just this super mobile person. Have who, you guys ever had a client like that? Well, I remember I, like oh, a abs- kid like yeah. this for sure. Like, she was very like good at gymnastics and, and did all these like crazy bendy moves and uh, hyperextension and, um, just just getting her to to do like basic like overhead press or anything with weights, I just I, I had to like I, I had to sit her down a lot of times and just have her concentrate on you know uh, uh, postural positions where she's squeezing and tensing up because she just didn't have that like um, that 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 sort of ability to to tense up and like maintain a position without like constantly swaying and moving and you know it was very. It was very challenging for me to get her to like just you know focus on on like maintaining a nice like rigid uh, position. So I, I've had several clients like this, and, and a lot of times it's somebody who their whole life have, have done like yoga. That's why I asked that, like if he was a yogi or something, because it's it's more common for me that I've had clients that never really strength trained or never lifted weights, but they did yoga their whole life or did gymnastics. And so they have this, they're hyper mobile. And, and then probably too, they were already, cause we are as humans, we tend to gravitate towards the things we're good at. So these types of people, you know, found that they were really super flexible, young and continued that on forever. And so now here I have them at 40, 50 years old or whatever, and they're super mobile, but then they have no stability or real strength So I tend to lean towards, I mean, definitely for sure, I think step one, like we said, tension, uh, but the type of training, like I would lean this person more towards hypertrophy. So like if they had like one of our MAPS programs, I would start them in phase three uh, before one, because I would want, 
I want I would want to teach them more a slow and controlled like a tempo like a four two two mm-hmm. hypertrophy mm-hmm. type tempo where they're really concentrating on the eccentric motion and stabilizing the weight, mm-hmm. pausing at the bottom at the isolation uh, at the isometric part for like two seconds and then you know, then contracting after that. So uh, this is where hypertrophy training actually could be really beneficial for some of that because it and more so from a tempo like yeah, because i'm emphasizing that slow yeah, yeah that slow count i talked sure. about this the other day on the show that i mean it's crazy to me especially being a guy who's a, uh who tends to lean towards hypertrophy training and and is the aesthetic bodybuilder type when i look at the gym like people who think they're training like hypertrophy very few people are really following like a protocol where they're uh, doing a four two two, which is the the ideal protocol for hypertrophy, and no one. I pay attention next time you see someone do a bench press, a shoulder press. It's a slow. They're slow reps, dude. Yeah, it, people it, don't do them like yeah, that. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's a that's a total yeah. of like eight seconds. That's a long time for a rep. And like, the amount of weight you can use when you do that is substantially less. Yes. So, and you just don't see that. You mm-hmm. rarely ever see any. You see guys and girls manipulate weight uh, repetition. So all of a sudden they're doing instead of doing five six reps now this week they're doing ten to fifteen reps. But how many of those people really manipulate tempo? And this was a big thing that I like to teach people because I don't think a lot of people do it. Not a lot of people do it well. And I think there's lots of benefits to actually training that tempo because it teaches, not only do you get the benefits of the hypertrophy side of it, but then you also get the benefits Mm -hmm. of the control and the eccentric motion, which for somebody who lacks stability uh, and strength because they're hypermobile, uh, this is a great uh, tool. I would probably take this person and I would spend a little more time in phase three uh, at the start before I progress them to phase one or two of maps. So this, so your biggest enemy, by the way, is static, uh, relaxed, static stretching. Do mm-hmm. not do, yeah, you're not looking passive. for more range of motion. You want to connect to your range of motion. Yoga is excellent for this if you do yoga the way it's supposed to be done. If you do yoga to where you get in positions and you let your joints hold your position, this you're going to get much worse. If you get into these positions and get yourself into a, a, these positions, these yoga poses, where you're having to support yourself with and what they call in, yo, in yoga prana, where you're intrinsic tension the entire time. So if I'm in like warrior one or warrior two, I'm not just letting my legs push out against my mat. I'm sucking them in at the same time and I'm tensing my entire body and I'm not letting my body be stabilized by just my joints i'm actually having to hold myself and my muscles number one it's exhausting but number two it's going to connect you to these ranges of motion so if you do yoga properly it's great for this you do it wrong it's going to make you a lot worse well that's why i say drop drop the yoga and go to kin stretch i mean you'll get all these that's what kin stretch is i mean all of it's based off of eddie ofa what is a personal habit you do daily that contributes to your success he asked everybody it includes doug too so What's everybody? Uh, I don't what's, know. You what's, guys, you guys go first. You don't do anything. I do. I can go. I mean, I can talk you, about it. If well, you, you go. always do go first. You may yeah. as well go now. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey there. <laughs> little little, res- little resentment. <laughs> so one of the things I do is I try not to be resentful. That's the first thing that I do. I'm appreciative of <laughs> appreciative. Yeah. Of, you know. yeah. No. Um. So this is if I don't. Know, I can't, I'm surprised I never talked about this. Um. But uh, I do this every single day. And I, the people that I'm around, I try and do this to everybody, but uh, a lot of times I forget, but I do this to at least one person a day is I'll look at that person for a couple seconds and then I'll try to feel. Picture them naked. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Totally. That's I, I can always tell. always looks at I me. I can tell when you're doing this to me too. Yeah. yeah. You can't, can you? Because <laughs> yeah. I make a kind of a gross face like, oh, <laughs> I, shouldn't have done, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. I look He's back at Justin. always at me. Yeah. It's awkward. <laughs> I go back to Justin like, yeah. yeah. No, I, um, I look, I'll look at someone and I'll feel my gratitude and my love for that person. So rather than just like, you know, making a list of the things that I'm, you know, thankful for, for that person, I'll look at them and I'll try to feel get the emotion and the feeling of gratitude and love uh, for that individual. And when you, when I first started doing this, um, it's, uh, it's, it's at first it wasn't natural, but now I can do it and I can immediately get that feeling. And I, when I, when I do this regularly or to more people on a regular basis, the way I act towards people um, and even towards myself is more of an accurate representation of the way I want to, or the way I think I should 
act. I'm less likely to say things that I'll regret later on, and I'm more likely to be empathetic towards people when they're, you know, do you know, acting a certain way, like you know, if they're in a bad mood or they say something that irritates me, and I'll look at that person and try and feel that feeling of gratitude and love towards that person. I'm more likely to be like, well, they're having a bad day; it's not a big deal. Versus sometimes my reaction is to fire back or whatever. So doing this every single day um, makes uh, makes me really uh, happy and appreciative for what I have currently. Um, and it, I don't know, it just it just feels good. It feels no, good to I, do that. You know what's cool? I'm. It's really. I had no idea you're going to go that direction. And I know there's probably people listening right now and be like, "Well, how the fuck does that contribute to success?" And they're thinking success maybe financial or or progress. But let me tell you something that I think is really unique about you that it, that is such a great. Uh, thing to share because a lot of people wouldn't look at that as uh, like a major thing that's going to get them closer to their goal or being successful. And I would definitely argue that, especially being somebody who knows you and knows uh, your ability to communicate with people and get your point across is a huge part of your success. There's a lot of intelligent people that I've, I've met in my life, but more often than not, uh, the, the, more intelligent they become, uh, the less receptive they are to other people and the more of a turnoff they are. Mm. And it, they're not the most effective communicators. In fact, I, it's rare to meet someone really, really intelligent that is actually really, really good at communicating that. I feel like they, they're, they end to, they, they, most people end to go opposite directions. Like the more intelligent you become, you become so f- hyper-focused on that that you're not very socially aware and mm. self-aware and so you just keep driving towards that direction and you don't realize that that's great you've got all this great knowledge but now how well are you at communicating that and how well are you at interacting with others and i think that's probably one of your greatest strengths and attributes is this ability to continue to grow to continue to learn to comp- continue to be this brilliant man and mind with the same ability to interact with all different types of people and communicate information to uh, everybody. And that, I think it's a huge part of the success of Mind Pump. So I'm glad you shared that. Yeah, That's no, what. I appreciate it. I had a, a friend that I uh, that I, I met years and years ago, uh, English guy. And I, I, I probably talked to him before about him before on the show. But everywhere I would go with this guy, he would, first off, the dude was always just happy. Like he was always awesome to be around. And everywhere he went, he just made friends with everybody. And um, I asked him like one day, I'm like, dude, I'm like, you're like one of the great, like we can go to a bar, we can go to a restaurant, we can go to the store. And you just, you just seem to just have a great time with people. Why is that? And he goes, well, he goes, first off, I don't, uh, like I don't have any room for strangers. So why not just be friends with everybody? And he goes, and I also just really love people. And I let that come out. And I, I noticed that way more often than not, people treated him well as a result from it. And, I, it, you know, it's funny. Um, it really hit me when me and him went to a bar and I'm noticing people around me and how happy people were at the bar. And it was because of alcohol, right? People are drinking and now they're happy and now they're all having great conversations and dudes are hugging each other. And I'm like, why can't we just be like that all the time? And this is part of it is is just realizing, you know, the gratitude that I have for the people around me. And I do, I have the, the only reason why the people are around me in the first place is because there's a role. I have, I, there's a role for them in my life. Otherwise, why would they be there? And so I have gratitude in some form for them. And when I remind myself of that, the way I talk to them and understand them so much better, so much better. And at the, and like you said, Adam, uh, it's helped a lot with, just my ability to talk to people or whatever, but I didn't even do it necessarily for that. I just noticed that it really made a big difference. Oh, it makes a huge difference. It's part of the reason why we can all, as alpha males uh, and super visionary, all individual leaders can all actually work together is that we have this mutual respect and and a lot of that comes from your ability to to do that. I think that's an important quality for all, anybody who aspires to be a leader um, you, this, this is a huge asset and a huge tool. I think that anyone can use. I think it's a great, great advice. Um, personally for me, I, I do kind of this thing at the end of my night where I kind of assess my day. Right. Mm. So, you know, I've got a ton of goals, 
as always. I've always got things, whether they're like I have right now, I have uh, financial goals because we're uh, Katrina and I are trying to get a house right now. So I have these personal financial goals. I've got goals related to my personal growth as far as like reading a book every single month. I've got physical goals right now uh, related to how I want my physique to, uh, to be able to perform, to be able to look, to be mobile. Like, so I've got all these like big goals, right? None of those goals are accomplished overnight, right? So that's what I mean by a big goal. It's not big as it's like not hard to accomplish. It's just it takes time and consistency. So at the end of every night, I kind of assess my day and ask myself, you know, what short term things that I do today that will impact my long term goal? You know, so what decisions did I make throughout my day that positively affected one of those goals? Now, some days I have a great day and it feels like I chipped away at everything, right? I've knocked a chapter out in the book. I got a phenomenal workout where I dressed mobility and strength and did this. I did something special for Katrina. I moved some money over and made or did something to make extra money and save that. Like, so sometimes I have these unbelievable days where it's like this huge like pat on the back. Great job, Adam. You know, and I and I have that conversation with myself. Like I let myself know that like that was a fucking great day and should be happy. And then I have other days where maybe shit doesn't go as planned and I don't get a lot of those things accomplished or maybe I get none of those things accomplished. And so if if not if I didn't move forward in in one of those areas then the next day I'm I'm heavily focused on making sure that I accomplish something. And then I also don't beat myself up over some of those days because that's just part of life. Sometimes, and I just said this on my Insta story the other day, sometimes progression is just not regressing, right? Sometimes a week goes by and maybe I didn't progress towards one of those goals, but then I also didn't regress. Like a lot of maybe the day I was putting out fires and, and managing things that I wasn't ready for and just keeping my being calm, collective and focused on my long-term goals and knowing that, hey, you know, maybe a family thing came up and family is a priority. Even though it's not one of my goals, it's a priority in my life that I needed to address that. And I, and I did, you know, so uh, not not beating myself up because I didn't move forward on my goal and saying, hey, you know, tomorrow, though, I'll make sure to take steps forward in this. So at the end of the night, I, I, I tend to assess my day, my interactions with people. And and I and I ask myself, like, OK, what did I accomplish today towards my long term goals that I set for myself? And I at the, at the beginning of the year, I'm like anybody else, you know, I have a you know, New Year's resolution or the, I, the beginning of the year, I say, these are all the things that I want to accomplish this year. And I rattled off a few with the the books and the financial and the things like that. So um, I think real easy or it's really easy for people to say that they're going to do all these things and they, they talk the game like, oh, I'm going to do this or this year I'm going to get in this shape and, you know, shit happens. And then they make excuses why that didn't happen where, you know, that's I just don't work that way. I, I set big goals for myself and I'm going to fucking do it. It's just a matter of time for me. And I, and the way I can chip away at that is I just revisit it every night. Like what have I done today to, to accomplish that goal? What have I done today to accomplish this goal? And, and that one, I just kind of evaluate that. I think mm. you respect yourself enough to <clears throat> keep your word because mm -hmm. a lot of times people will promise themselves something and they're the first people to break <laughs> their promise to themselves, uh, to themselves. Like they won't even break a promise to someone else, mm -hmm. but when it comes to themselves, they're like, um, you know, whatever. It's like they don't respect themselves enough. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's integrity all the way it. through. With that's it. integrity to me, really, yeah. right? I, I yeah. believe that's. I mean, that's the, the the integrity in its purest form. In my opinion, is you know, fuck the things that I say to other people. The things that I say to myself are most important. If I say I'm going to do something, mm -hmm. um, I better fucking do it. You know, like and 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 because I'm never going to set a goal for myself that's not achievable. Too, like I'm very realistic. I'm not going to be like, oh, by the end of this year, I plan to be this or have this. It's like, well, that's. I can't control that. That's so outrageous. Like, why would I even say this? So I set realistic goals for myself that I know that I can obtain. But fuck yeah, it'll be work and yeah, yeah it'll be hard. But you better believe I'm going to follow through on it if I if I tell myself I'm going to do it. Yeah, <clears throat> I can identify with that a lot. Um, especially uh, one thing that I've sort of put into place into practices whenever whenever I have a goal or I have something that I want to accomplish. Um, if I verbalize it, it's for sure. It, I'm, it's happening. Like it's, once you say, once it. I say it, even if it's just out loud, it has to be out loud. Um, either if it's just myself or if it's, you know, like it's weird, but I'll just, I'll say it, but you know, by myself, I'll say it out loud, uh, or to, to my wife or, or somebody else I trust. And, uh, like it, from then on, every action I have to take, I, I just take and I chip away at it every single day. 
And I try, this has been a really hard process for me is to be able to say no as well. So that's, that's been like, um, one of the practices that I feel like has led me more towards success and efficiency is, um, you know, because I'm, I tend to be a people pleaser, you know, and, and I want to, I want to accomplish like all kinds of things. I want everybody to be happy around me and I want to contribute and, um, you know, benefit everybody else around me as well. But, um, you know, for me to be able to accomplish things, I have to stay focused and stay uh, on target. And and if there's too many things that somebody will say, oh, let's do this. Oh, like, hey, man, come over. It's like, I have to like check myself and, and evaluate um, whether that's a good use of my time or not. And especially now, you know, with kids and, and family and then the balance and then constantly evaluating uh, where the holes are and, and where I need to come back and fill so that's just kind of my process every day. I will say um, you've impressed me so much with your uh, – I, I haven't met anybody as willing to step outside of their comfort zone as much as you. I'm talking to you, Justin. I think, I think you guys are, are the same, though. Well, I mean, I'll tell you, I a, a lot of what we do is in my comfort zone, yeah. so it's very difficult to say that in terms of our work, like getting on a podcast, getting in front of a camera – you know, if we do a, you know, the stuff that we do is mind pump. Most of it is like in my comfort zone. It's not a problem. A lot of it is out of your comfort zone and you're the mm-hmm. first person to do it. Like mm-hmm. you just went up to Spokane to be on uh, Greenfield's podcast by yourself and to do all these things to talk about your, your axon stick. And I watched it and I loved it. And I'm like, man, I, I mean, you just, and I know how, uh, you know. Yeah. It was nerve wracking. Yeah. Talking <laughs> was, like uncomfortable being the me. center of attention is yeah. something you don't necessarily, it's not your thing, No, but you fucking do it. Like, it's great. It's a, it's, it's really cool to work with uh, a bunch of doers and not a bunch of just talkers. You know what I mean? I appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. Doug, what do you do, Doug? Yeah. For my more practical day to day, um, it becomes a little bit overwhelming at times because there's too much to do and things can slide through the cracks. And so what I have is a a book called a planner pad. What this does, it has three columns. The top one is everything you want to accomplish during the week. The second column is what you want to accomplish during the day. And the third column is your day-to-day schedule. So if you have a meeting at three o'clock, you put it in the book. And by reviewing that on a day-to-day basis and filling in all those blanks, what allows me to do is stay mostly on top of everything, even though there's, there's a lot going on. I think one of the big mistakes people make is that they go through their life winging it all the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm partially to blame for that as well. But that planner pad does allow me to uh, focus in on what needs to be done and stay focused on the big task at hand. So that's my little tip of the day. You you know, along those lines, like it's it reminds me, too, of what I'm going through right now of heavily tracking again. Mm. And I swear every time I make this transition of like, I'm going to be tracking and paying attention it's so much work like to do all this, right? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, now I got to photo everything. I got to count it all. I got to add it up. I got to input it. It's like I'm definitely adding more work to my day. But it's amazing that because I'm, it's forcing me to be organized uh, about my day, how much more successful I am at accomplishing what the current goal is as far as mm-hmm. w- what I'm trying to do body composition wise. So this is also why I'm such a huge fan of tracking and teaching that to others is right along the lines of what Doug's saying with putting that in the planner is like, you know, if you just kind of go about your goal as your fitness goal at winging it, um, you know, it's, some people can, some people have that ability. Some people are smart enough and have been doing this long enough, like a Sal that are so intuitive and understand their body that well, that it's like, yeah, I got this. I could, I could do this. No problem. But for the most part, most people aren't that organized, aren't that dialed, uh, and are winging it all the time. And it's like, man, I, I highly, highly recommend tracking and paying attention for a while and pay attention to how that bleeds over into the rest of your life. Because Mm -hmm. I tell you what, I'm watching myself having to do all this extra work, you know, to provide this vlog and shit for everybody. But at the same time too, I'm getting way more stuff done. So it's bleeding over into other aspects of my life because yeah, you're just more disciplined. I was just going to ask that if it, if, it, if you notice the carryover. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, it's, and you're even seeing it in my activity level. You're watching, uh, my movement and just, and I'm not trying to increase it. Like, uh, and I believe this was one of the questions someone asked, like, how's Adam getting 20,000 steps? Well, fuck, I'm just, I'm busy. I'm getting shit done. Like yeah. it's crazy. Like it's I, now I'm on week four now and it, it and there's just this natural progression of, 
movement and it's because I'm having to move to accomplish all the things I'm getting done all day long. And it, it wasn't that long ago. It was only a month, month ago where my steps and activity level was half of that. And I wasn't being lazy. We we're still doing a lot of shit. We've always got a lot of shit. Everybody in this room never has something not to do. You know, there's always yeah. something to be accomplished. But my my energy level, my ability to knock more out, and a lot of that I attribute to uh, being organized about that. And I, I know that's also a weakness of mine, that if I'm not doing that, uh, it, it, it carries over and then all of a sudden I feel lethargic and tired and slow and I don't have enough time in the day and it's like, fuck, I'm definitely doing way more than what I was doing before and I seem to have more time and more stuff now. So, so the return on investment's worth it for yeah, sure. Crazy. It, all, yeah. it blows my mind. Every time I do it, I'm like, fuck, I don't know why I ever stop because I get so much more accomplished. Next question is from Sarah Gets Fit Recovered. If overnight you became a female, <laughs> what do you think would be the most difficult thing about we'll it in question. general and for fitness? Uh, uh, the most difficult <laughs> thing would be Adam and Justin. Uh, <laughs> and, no, I'm just kidding. You know, it's it's this question's kind of cool because I actually thought about this exact- About being a woman? Yep. <laughs> I did. You know why? Because we had that question a little while back where uh, it was a little bit of controversy behind- where that girl was asking about like creeps in the gym. Oh yeah, yeah. And I sat down and actually had a really, really good conversation with Jessica about this. And hmm. I sat down and I explained to her, uh, not explained, excuse me, I asked her, like, tell me, like, I really want to know what it's like to be in a, a woman's body, going around <laughs> everyday life, going to gyms and stuff like that. And she says, okay. She goes, she told me, and this was an example she gave me. She goes, it's different when you're a woman and uh, you're getting, uh, you know, men are looking at you versus being a man and have women look at you. And he goes, the difference isn't necessarily that there's bad intentions because the vast majority of men don't want to harm or hurt a woman, just like the vast majority of women don't want to hurt, harm or hurt a man if they're checking them out. But the difference is m most women can't, or most men, I should say, have the ability to to pr do harm uh, to a woman, they're they're a much bigger threat. And so she said, she said when she's at a gym or when she's doing something and a guy's really staring at her, it's instinctual to feel a little bit of threat uh, or fear from it. Not because a guy's bad, but because if he wanted to, he could really do something. Whereas I would feel zero threat. Like chicks stare at me. Women could come up to me and say, "Yeah, but why do you long. think that is, though? Do you think that's because of the news and the information that's provided to us? Because statistically, we're just bigger. Because well, yeah, but statistically, what are the like if we if we were to talk about statistically, well, what are what is the likelihood of a female in that position it, getting? So it's not logical in the sense that the odds are very low. Right? The odds are in right, modern, that, modern and that's society. why. And that's why I'm challenging and asking. <laughs> it's 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 very instinctual. So it's it's like okay, it, it would be like. Um, like the like fear of sharks in the ocean, like going out and swimming in the deep ocean. Like I'm scared of sharks. The odds you're going to get bit by a shark are so low, it's ridiculous. But it's a fear, or why we fear flying. Right. They're all you know like it's instinctual in the sense that um, they're you know women for most of the human or all of human civilization we're a lot smaller than men. We're more aggressive. We're stronger. And so I tried to put myself in the in the like in, in the like imagine if I was a woman. And I could imagine, you know, that would be kind of challenging to, you know, be, you know, be fit, have people notice me for it, but then also be like, hey, man, like you're looking too much or feel a little threatened by it. Like I tried to think in terms of being a man, like if I went into, I don't know, a neighborhood that I didn't feel comfortable in, and I walked around at night, I would feel kind of threatened. Well, women can feel like that in a lot of different places. So that was interesting for me in general. I thought about that and I'm like, huh. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of interesting, uh, and that may be difficult to get used to because we don't really experience it. Like I like I said, if women are checking me out, the last thing in my mind is fear because I know if a woman does something to me, I'd probably be able to defend myself for the most part, unless it's like Ronda Rousey or something like that. But uh, the other thing with for fitness that would suck, and I'm, and this is going to be like total stereotype, right? That I think would suck would be the 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 normal and natural hormonal fluctuations. That women go through that, on a monthly basis. That I can agree with right away Be for sure. Because we don't experience, and we have hormonal fluctuations too as men, but it's nowhere near the the change and dramatic difference that women go through. And I could not imagine feeling for some women they feel completely different during different you know times of the month because hormones change. 
And you know, some women may debate this and be like, "That's it's true. Look, you could test a woman's hormones and a doctor could tell you it, what type, what part of your cycle you're in. That's how dramatic the difference can be. And I don't know. I feel like that would kind of suck to know that, oh, okay, here we go. I'm going to feel like this and I don't have any control over it. And here I go. I'm gonna, and for some women, it sucks. Some women feel fatigued. Uh, you know, they'll feel, you know, irritable and, or they'll get cravings or well, bloated and holding water yeah, and they're I not, mean, you know, feel lethargic and they feel their, you know, energies down. And I had a friend of I mine, mean, that would be a motherfucker. I had right a there. girlfriend of mine tell me once, she said, she goes for her, she had really bad symptoms. And she's like, imagine being sick for a month, for a week, every month. Like you're going to just, she said, that's what I feel like. I feel like I'm sick for a whole fucking week. Every single month. And I remember thinking like, oh, yeah, that would kind of suck. Like, I hate getting sick. I couldn't imagine. So that would be kind of interesting, right? I don't know. Now, I feel that you have to, if you're, if, and I know you're uh, obviously winning over all the women in our audience right now. <laughs> yeah, I was so. going to go in a totally different direction. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so, but I, I feel like you have to, if you're going to, if you're going to do that, and we're going to speculate, you have to also take into consideration all the positive things that come from that, too. Oh, of course. You can't just like. The question was the most difficult thing. I mean, I could, I could list. Some of the awesome stuff, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, so I think, I mean, first of all, I don't like to speculate on something. I have no fucking idea, you know. So that just get, <laughs> to me, I feel like this type of question. I don't know why someone picked this question because it's just going to get. They us just want to hear, yeah. I mean, look how much our look, ridiculous. Well, answers. look how much trouble I got in the last one. Yeah. You know, it's like it's like, yeah. and let me tell you, like, hey, let's get a <laughs> roast I, them for this. Well, the last one too was like I was literally sharing off of math. Statistics. This is I sure, sure. saw 100 women came to me with this exact same problem. Out of those 100, you know, 75 of them, this was the case. 25, this was the case, and that was where my information yeah. was coming from. Could it be completely one-sided and biased? And uh, like, I'm not saying it's a fact. I'm saying that was my experience, and so I don't have any experience being a female, so I couldn't say. What would be the most difficult thing? But I, if you were, what do you think would if, suck? Well, about it? I definitely would, I would piggyback off of what you said with the hormone thing because I I know being somebody who has uh, low hormones and has to take synthetic hormones and knows that I can feel the difference of my body up or down, and I know how that impacts my mood, my sex drive, my uh, drive to lift in the gym, uh, my motivation. I know how much that affects me, and and for that to happen to all women naturally. Fuck, I, I, my definitely my heart breaks for that. I feel like that would that would be tough. That would be tough to just manage that on a monthly basis and never know like is it going to be worse this month or less. And you know, like and then even like physical things like cramping and stuff like you know we don't know what that's like either to be in the just getting cramps out of nowhere. Like how shitty would that be? Like we're mid podcasting and I'm like getting this fucking cramp out of nowhere. Like <laughs> that would be annoying, right? So. I mean, to me, that would be one of the most difficult things. Uh, obviously, childbearing. I can't imagine what having a child would be like. That has to be. Oh, man. That, that would be so fucking crazy. That has to be. Yeah. To I mean, I, oh, I know pregnancy into this. Well, oh, wow. I mean, well, I mean, well, I mean it's yeah. a very, have, that's a female thing. Yeah, you have well, to. Yeah, right. But, I mean, and I know that, uh, that I've I've had some really awful shits in my life and how painful those were <laughs> Come on, dude. and what, what that felt like physically. <laughs> And that was nothing like a uh, child coming out of, you know, a, an area. So I just, uh, yeah. I can't fathom what they go through during that, that you know, <laughs> that so, process. I gave birth to a so bird. ridiculous. That's horrible. Oh, I love well, it. of course it's ridiculous. We're pretend, I know, it we're is. Pretend, that's not, like, we're pretend, I have we're nothing for this. Females like, yeah, I was just thinking, like, oh, it sucked to have to wear a thong all the time, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, well, you don't a, have to that's wear a, a choice. Yeah. You I, but I also, yeah. you know. Like, like, I, I, running with big old breastuses, you know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Wait, of course, Justin assumes. Yeah. If he was, a girl, I would have big yeah, breasts. He'd have yeah, big yeah, yeah. He assumes he's got big tits and he has to yeah. wear a thong. Like, yeah, what the I'm fuck? Like, <laughs> trying to do bench presses and it's just like a joint, joint, joint. Yeah. You know? We all know. Oh, we all know what, what Justin wants to look like if yeah. he was a girl. Yeah. <laughs> he'd be you know, pretty voluptuous. Trying to get out of the house without looking at myself all I, day. I don't know. know. I, I like to think that we're. I think I like to think that we're pretty evolved uh, in the United States, especially, and I feel like definitely in California of equality and I know we're not all the way there yet yeah. and I'm sure some piss somebody off that's a feminist well but you know it goes I, both ways dude it goes both ways like you know men and women get the short end of the stick because of their sex on different yeah. things like I mean you go if you're a guy and you get accused of a crime and you go to a court and you're a woman especially if it's a violent crime they get way less time than we do. They fucking lock dudes up. Right. Uh, and that's statistics. But that's just one thing. There's there's things that go both ways. But I just think, I think it's a cool question. I Here's something that I was just thinking about. 
in the in the way future when we have like this these computer systems where you can kind of plug in and in this virtual reality and kind of become your avatar I bet you one of the most popular things people will do is become the opposite sex. For sure. Mm. For sure. I I mean, why wouldn't you want to do to, that? To see what that's like, Of course right? I would want to do that. I, yeah. There's no doubt in my mind that that would be interesting. It's virtual reality. I'm not actually changing my sex. To, so to actually get an idea of uh, of that and what that would be like, I think everybody, uh, you're probably right. That would yeah. probably be the most pro- that'd be the most popular download or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Change your sex app, whatever yeah. it's going to be. I don't know what it's going to be like. But but yeah, I think, um, I, I mean, it would be very interesting to see how uh, the female mind, and then, so here's the thing though, by the way, we're being very stereotypical. Because the individual variances between right, I mean it's that's why you know individuals are so different. That's why I don't like to speculate, well, and the, and and I'm passionate about like you know, everything that we we do. Like we make the most or the worst of it, man. And I feel like I'm I'm so anti uh, victim, like. And and I and when people get upset at me, I just get fucking more angry because I'm like, fuck you. You have no idea what I went through in my life, and I don't put it on you, and I don't say poor me. Like, and yeah. you know, I all you know, I'm at a disadvantage because of this. Like, yeah, sure, sure, some of that is true, yeah. but it's like I don't see. And here's the, with the question because it was a little longer. I I think she, oh, it was, so. Yeah. Sure. So what she said was she likes the bro talk. So I think she wanted. She thought it would be funny. Yeah. But we're going up to the <laughs> oh, no, yeah. oh, we got yeah, all serious. Was, Why didn't yeah. you finish the question then? So well, we knew that. Well, I don't I just went in my you know my direction, which kind oh, of yeah, you, <laughs> sorry, set the tone a little bit. Yeah, you did not give uh, us that. You didn't give well, us Well, it's a ridiculous question, so it, it deserves a ridiculous answer. Well, I'll tell I'll tell you what would be interesting, and uh, I'm sure I'll get in trouble for this, but th- at a certain if you're if there's an if you're an attractive female within a certain age group. You have a lot of power over men, and I, I think women will admit this. I think they to know not this. abusing it, right? Well, it's that would just be challenging not to abuse that, dude. I mean, you have quite a bit, uh, quite a bit of power. They've done studies on this where just if you're an attractive young woman, uh, you know, you can get men to and without. I'm not, I'm not talking about like outwardly telling them, you know, with sex or anything like that, but just because you're an attractive young female, you know, guys will want to do things for you just instinctually. Yeah, you could bait them. And it's for sure. It's fucking. It's very interesting. I mean, imagine limited power, <laughs> like the dark, <laughs> the dark side I mean, of the, yeah of the force. I would abuse it, for dude. Sure. I have. I you know how many friends I've had that are women. They're like, oh, I, I get out of p- tickets all the time because yeah. I'll just I'll cry. No, that's a, I don't want to pay for shit. That's a great point because I've actually. I mean, Katrina and I have joked and talked about things like this before, and the the thing that I kind of joke about is like, oh man, if I was a female, I would just be running game on all these dudes. <laughs> Like I would just be, I'm, <laughs> and I'm joking. Like I really would, but I think that would actually be a difficult thing that I would have to like, like have self reflect and go like, uh, Adam, yeah, am I just using that? Yeah, you're yeah. kind of taking advantage of yeah. all these of all these boys, you know, that are. <laughs> do I feel bad today? Yeah, nah. feel, yeah right. Yeah, 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 but I'm hungry, you know. Yeah, so I, you know, I want to go to a nice dinner tonight. Like he really I, likes me. Yeah, you know? so I'm, I'm kind I, of pumping him up. A I little. think it does. I think uh, if you're a really attractive, smart woman that gets a lot of attention from men. It would be a challenge to not abuse that. It would be hard to not do that because you and and the way you would justify it is like you know what these motherfuckers always be gawking at me and making me feel scared and nervous. So yeah. you know what I'm gonna get some free yeah. dinners let's out of this shit. Let's channel this. Like, yeah, yeah, let's channel yeah. it. Let's yeah. flip it on its I head. Have an Amazon gift, uh, you know, thing list that you can, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> dude, buy me some shit. It's crazy because and it actually makes me. Uh, it, I love looking at uh, humans just as a species, and I love looking at like men and women, how we behave, but it's so apparent. This particular thing is so apparent. When you, And every guy who's listening who's ever been to a strip club will tell you, <laughs> you go to a strip club, the power that women can have over men is hel- – like every guy in there yeah, – We're just a bunch of chimpanzees. Every guy in there <clears throat> knows that the strippers are, are being nice to you 100% because they want your money. 100%. They could give a shit about you. In fact, you probably are repulsive to them. And every time you go, if you go with a group of guys, when you leave, there's always one or two dudes that's like, no, 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 dude, she really liked me. No, man. No, I'm serious. This is her real phone I number. Got her number. Yeah, yeah no, she, We're she out wanted to make tonight. out with me. I know she did, yeah. dude. She totally likes. Like, no, dude, you believe that because she had, yeah. she cast a spell on you because you're a man, <laughs> yeah. and we're stupid with that you kind of shit. You are an idiot. Absolutely. If you want to ask us questions that we answer on these episodes, the place to do it is on Instagram. The page is Mind Pump Media. And then we all have personal pages. Mine is Mind Pump Sal, Justin is Mind Pump Justin, and Adam is Mind Pump Adam. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, 
and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. Mind Pump.